Hello, I'm Sherry Yannick, Churchill Librarian, and today we are reading Cammie and the Yaks. This is by Andrea Stansiner and it's Stryer, and it's illustrated by Bert Dodson. Hope you enjoy this really interesting tale. Cammie and the Yaks. High in a land where winds blow snow clouds off tall mountain peaks, Cammy stepped out into the early morning dark. He sniffed the moist snow. His father and his older brother earned their living by guiding, setting up camp, and cooking for mountain climbers. Since they were starting a trek at sunrise, they had to load the animals with pots, stove, food, and tents right away. Looks like it's the middle of the night. On the slopes, Cammy could see two pine bough torches that his father and his older brother were carrying to search for their four yaks. Why did the yaks come down by themselves as they usually do? Cammy wondered. He looked up again to where father and Nurge were searching. No, that's not where the yaks will be. They like the meadow near the monk's lodge. He took from his pocket his prized possession, a shiny tin whistle that his climber had given him. Curly Horn, the largest yak, always came when he heard a whistle. So Cammy took a big breath and popped his cheeks and blew the whistle. Its buzz tickled his lips, though he could not hear its shrill call because he was deaf. Cammy began to climb. He crossed a gully and worked his way up the hillside until he reached a meadow near the monk's lodge. He blew his whistle again. In the faint light, he searched the ground. No yak droppings here. Suddenly, a fork of lightning flashed across the dark sky, singeing the air. Cammy smelled the sizzle and wrinkled his nose. Thunder rumbled. Cammy felt it like the vibrating drum beats at temple festivals. His heart began to race. I must find the yaks before the storm comes. He darted to the meadow beyond and the th for the third time blew his whistle. Curly horn, please be there, he pleaded silently. But the meadow was empty. Another bolt of lightning uh, brightened the sky. The odor was stronger. Crickles ran along Cammy's arm. The air rumbled into answer to the lightning. Cammy ran toward the thick brush. No sign of the yaks there either. He took great gulps of air. The lightning flashed again, looking like skeleton things were screeching for him. He screeched and clenched his fists. One more place, he thought. I'll try beyond the crowd. He blew his whistle, which made him feel braver. Scuttling through the rocks, Cammy came to two huge boulders. As he slipped between them, he recognized three dark silhouettes standing in one long line. The yaks. The yaks! Cammy jumped with joy. He blew his whistle, expecting Curly Horn to start toward him. The yak looked at Cammy, but did not budge. Rolling to Cur running to Curly Horn, Cammy tucked at his thick woolen, woven collar. Still, the yak would not stir. Cammy tugged again, then looked around. White spot, lying down, was pawing at the earth. Cammy dropped Curly Horn's collar and dashed to the littlest yak. He swung his arms around him and pulled. Get up, please get up, Cammy grunted. Don't be lazy. White spot struggled frantically, then stopped. Another bolt of lightning shot across the sky. Cammy shivered as the thunder crumbled. He saw that the yak's hind leg was stuck deep, stuck deep in a crevice between two heavy rocks. Uh, so this is why he couldn't come. No. Cammy crouched and looked into White Spot's frightened eyes. He stroked his hairy head. I'll bring help soon. He blew his whistle, hoping that to alert Father or Norgay, but thunder again rumbled, pulsing the air. Hail started to fall. Cammy tried to run down the mountain, but the path was now icy with the frozen pebbles. The hail pelted his face, blurring the wet. He fell, hitting his shoulder on a rock. Rubbing the sore spot, he sniffled. With tears welling up in his eyes, Cammy could barely see. He shuffled forward to keep his footing. He came to the gully and skidded into it. The other side was now as slippery as yak bark. Cammy tumbled backwards. A streak of lightning lit the fire, lit the river of hail in the gully. Cammy trembled as the clap of thunder shook the air. He inched his way on his hands and knees. Holding his breath, he crept slowly. His mittens got wet and icy. Hail hit his neck and slid down as fast as he could. Little by little, he made it over the gully's edge. When he got to his knees over the top, he took a deep 
Yeah. Zigzagging back and forth, Tammy finally reached the stone wall that bordered the village path. He rubbed his freezing mittens along the round rock. Nearing his house, he saw, he saw Norgay returning. His father was in front of the house, shoulders hunched. Because he had never heard words, Tammy was not able to speak. Instead, he grabbed Father's hand and pointed up to the meadow. Father was angry. He picked Tammy up and plumped him down inside the doorstep. You don't understand, Tammy thought. I can help. I know where the yaks are. Then he took out his whistle and blew three long blasts, but his father paid no attention. Tammy hopped over the large step and frantically pulled at Norgie's jacket. He put his mitten hands to his head and imitated the yak horns. Norgie stared at his little brother. Tammy lowered his head with his hands and curved forward and lumbered in a yak-like walk. Norgay opened his mouth wide, pointed at the yak's water trowel, and smiled. Tammy saw that Norgay understood at last. Then he put his leg in a crack between two stones and pretended to be stuck. As another long river of lightning flashed across the sky, Norgay spoke to Father. Father nodded and grabbed his shovel. He and Norgay followed Tammy up, up, far up the mountain. Tammy led them behind the boulders and pointed to white stuff spot. Father and Norgay ran to the trap yak. Together they moved one of the heavy rocks and freed its hind feet. White spot struggled to his feet. Father, brow wrinkled, rubbed his fingers carefully along the leg. Sigh with relief. Said white spot's okay. Tammy ran into father's arms. Father picked him up and clasped him to his chest. Father put him down in front of Curly Horn. Tammy took the big yak's thick woven collar in his hand. Immediately, the other yaks fell in line. Tammy grinned at Father. I did it, and he knows I did it. Tammy tugged on Curly Horn's collar. Tammy proudly led the yaks, his father, and his brother down the mountain. So again, this is Tammy and the yaks. I hope you enjoyed this story of this family and the Amayas trying to find their yaks. Thanks for listening and keep on reading.